In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the features and settings of the Insta360 Flow smartphone gimbal. If you haven't purchased yours yet, there's a link in the description to purchase it directly from Insta360. Now, let's get started. Start by placing the magnetic phone clamp in the center of your phone. And you wanna make sure this little camera icon is facing towards the camera lens. This is the grip cover. You use it to protect the handle and for a more comfortable grip while you're holding the gimbal. The white dot and notch on the magnetic clamp line up with the notch here on the flow. You just align them and it's secured by the magnet. To unfold the flow, grab the pen arm and if you look down here, there's an arrow showing you which direction to twist. So you hold the pen arm and pull the handle down towards you and it automatically comes on. The flow will automatically turn off when you fold it back up. To fold it back up, you grab the pan arm and follow the arrow to twist it back up. Now the unit is off. The flow has a built-in selfie stick that extends eight and a half inches and you can also tilt up the base to get a better angle. The flow Folds up very small, but the downside of that is that the grip is on the small side, but there is a solution to that. You pull from the base here and the handle is extended to give you a better grip, but there's also a built-in tripod. So you extend the legs even, even further. And now you got a tripod, which is also a very nice feature. On this channel, I bring you the latest camera news, reviews, and how-tos, so make sure to like and subscribe to learn how to get the most out of your gear. This is the power button. When the flow is unfolded but powered off, you can press it once to check the battery level. You long press it to turn the flow on. Press it twice to put the flow in standby mode. Long press the power button to turn the flow off. When the flow is on, you can tap the power button once to check the battery level also. This is the switch button. Press it twice to change the phone's orientation from horizontal to vertical and from vertical to horizontal. You can also manually rotate your phone from horizontal to vertical and from vertical to horizontal. Press the button once to switch between the front and rear facing camera. Press it three times to switch between video and photo modes. This is the shutter button. Press it once to take a photo or start a recording. If you're in photo mode, do a long press and it will shoot a burst. Move the joystick right to pan to the right. Move it to the left to pan to the left. Push up to tilt up and pull down to tilt down. This black section is actually a touch panel. You can switch between flow modes or shooting modes using the touch panel. Around the edge here is the zoom wheel. If you're in FPV mode, if you turn the wheel, it'll roll the camera to the right and to the left. If you're in any of the other modes like auto, follow and pan follow, the wheel zooms in and out. This is the trigger button. You pull it twice to recenter the gimbal. Pull three times to change the phone between front facing and backward facing. Long press to enter lock mode. Lock mode locks all three axes and is great for follow shots and hyperlapse. Press once and then long press to enter active plus mode. In active plus mode, the gimbal follow speed is faster, which helps shoot faster moving objects. The four LED lights here indicate the current battery level or the selected flow mode. If all four LEDs blink quickly, then an error has occurred. The two most common errors are, one, the flow is physically prevented from moving, and two, the phone is not centered or not held securely in the phone clamp. In auto mode, the gimbal automatically adjusts its tilt and pan access settings based on your movements. In follow mode, the tilt and pan access follows your hand movements, 
which is more sensitive than the auto mode. In pan follow mode, the tilt and roll axis are locked, while the pan axis follows the handle movements. In FPV mode, the gimbal can rotate freely with the handle movements in any direction. This is the power input port, and you use it to charge your flow using the provided Type-C cable. Here is the Type-C output port, and you can use it to power a light or another accessory. You can also use the flow as a power bank to charge other items like your phone. One of the features I like is behind this cover, and that's the built-in cold shoe. So I use the wireless go microphone so I can slide it right into there and use it with my phone. Right on the bottom is a quarter inch thread so that way you can attach it to accessories like a tripod and that is really convenient. You'll need to download the Insta360 app on your phone to use the Flow. Turn on the Flow and open the 360 app to connect the devices. If it's your first time connecting your Flow to the app, you'll receive several prompts to confirm your information and to give app permissions. Once your Flow is connected to the app, you'll enter the shooting interface. This is the home icon. Tap it to go to the Insta360 app. Pull the trigger on the gimbal once to return to the shooting screen. The next icon to the right is the Shot Genie. The Shot Genie provides shooting tutorials and ideas based on your environment. If you're in a low light situation, tap here to set the flash. Tap the filter icon to pick a filter that fits your style. The face filter is an interesting feature. If you set it to auto, it will smooth out your skin and make adjustments to the shape of your face, your eyes, and your nose. You can go in and manually adjust those features also. I'm going to max out my face, eyes, and nose. I kind of look like a cartoon alien baby version of myself. Um, I wouldn't use a face filter, but I know it's something that's really popular right now. Tap here to enable gesture tracking. When gesture tracking is on, if you face the camera and raise your palm, the camera will automatically track you. In the upper right hand corner is the flow's current battery level and your phone's current battery level. Over here on the left side, you can set the camera's resolution and frame rate. You can also adjust the camera settings. You can manually adjust the shutter speed, ISO, EV, and white balance. Tap the gimbal shape icon to adjust the flow settings. You can select the flow modes, auto, follow, pan follow, and FPV. You can change the mode change method. With option A, swipe the touch panel clockwise and counterclockwise to change the flow mode and double tap the shutter and switch buttons to change the shooting mode. With option B, you swipe the touch panel to change the shooting mode and double tap the shutter and switch buttons to change the flow mode. You can adjust the joystick speed, the zoom speed, and tracking sensitivity. Front camera auto tracking can be turned on or off. When always on tracking is on, the camera will keep looking for the subject after they left the field of view until they reappear. When reverse joystick horizontally is enabled, if you move the joystick to the right, the gimbal pans to the left. If you move the joystick to the left, the gimbal pans to the right. When reverse joystick vertically is enabled, moving the joystick down tilts the gimbal up. Moving the joystick up tilts the gimbal down. The sound and vibration can be turned on and off. Use auto calibration when your phone alignment is off and you're sure you've attached the phone correctly. If the flow is calibrated correctly and the phone is attached correctly, but the horizontal axis is still a little off, you can adjust it a tenth of a degree at a time. The three dots in the lower left hand corner are the general settings. You can enable grid lines. There's a histogram if you're adjusting the camera settings manually and need to check the exposure. When automatic pop-up is enabled, the Insta360 app will automatically connect to the flow. When scene recognition is enabled, the current scene is analyzed and matched to a Shot Genie shooting template. Voice control is used in Shot Genie to search for relevant shooting templates. There are tutorials if you forget how to use a feature, an operation guide, device type, firmware version, serial number. You can save unstitched pen photos, save original hoop mode files, and reset your flow 
back to the factory settings. On the bottom is the current camera settings. You can tap here to select the zoom lenses. Tap this icon to switch between the front and rear camera. The red icon is the shutter button. Tap it to stop and start recordings or to take a photo. Tap here to view the photo album. The most recent photo or video is opened. This is a short test video I recorded. You can add a video to favorites. See more information about the video file like the resolution, frame rate, file size, and video length. Tap the speaker icon to mute or unmute the volume. Tap the trash can to delete the video. You can fast forward through the video by swiping the touch panel clockwise. Swipe the touch panel counterclockwise to rewind. You pull the trigger once to start or stop the video. Press the switch button to see the next file. This is a photo. Just like the video file, you can favorite it, get info, and delete it. You can zoom in and out of the photo using the zoom wheel. You can also zoom in and out of videos. Press the shutter button to go back to the previous file. Press the power button to return to the shooting screen. On the right side of the screen are all the shooting modes. The screen icons will change based on the mode you're in. In photo you can set the timer and adjust the photo aspect ratio. In pan follow you can take 3x3, 180 degree, 240 degree, and 360 photos. Tap the question mark to get photo tips. In time lapse, you can adjust the interval duration and it gives you suggestions like half a second for a street lapse, two seconds for a sunrise slash sunset. You can set the recording length. You can have the camera set at a fixed location or pan to the left or pan to the right or even set up a custom tracking pattern. Time shift is basically a hyperlapse, which is like a time lapse, but you're moving with the camera. There's slow-mo, dolly zoom, widescreen recording mode. In live mode, the flow's tracking capabilities are used in third-party apps with video streaming like Instagram or video conferencing apps. In hoop mode, you can record a half-court basketball game and the AI recognizes your best baskets and saves the highlights as individual clips. We've covered all the settings and features, but to learn even more about your Insta360 Flow Gimbal, check out this video here.